I started out as a Presbyterian, and I mean Presbyterian, very, very observant Presbyterian. As a child in New Zealand, my grandfather was a Presbyterian minister, my father was an elder, the church I went to was Presbyterian, and so when I resigned in 1973, it was with a tremendous sense of relief, because it had become meaningless. Quite coincidentally, when the world came crashing down on me in 2005, and my father died, and my mother died, and my personal life went completely crazy, I looked for a retreat and found the spiritual exercises and it slipped on like a well-used glove. When you've done some exploration of a spiritual nature in other people's traditions, like Hinduism, Buddhism, those sorts of things, part of the excitement of it is its novelty. But at this time I realised that I had a very significant education and familiarity with the uh, rituals and myths and stories of Christianity, why on earth not use those and see where they took me? Well, they took me a long way. <laughs> it was, I don't know why it happened, perhaps that strange meandering path is necessary or I wouldn't have ended up here at all. One thing that my religious education gave me, and perhaps my parents did too, was a strong sense of justice and keen awareness of where injustice was, um, mostly because of people not being allowed to have a say in the things that most affect them. Uh, exactly why it's so strong, I don't know, but it's been like a flame in my entire life. And so uh, I would naturally, I suppose, be drawn to the professions and the activities where I felt I might be able to make a difference. Every flaming lefty in the 70s says the same thing, but it's, it's persisted, in my case, uh, beyond all reason. <laughs> well, as a lawyer, I'd often written uh, papers and articles and reports and stuff like that <coughs> on things from mental illness to uh, homeless children to uh, family law matters, etc. And when I ceased to be the uh, Victorian Equal Opportunity Commissioner by annoying Jeff Kennett beyond belief, I'm very proud of that. <laughs> the Age asked me to write for them. And, uh, you know, I don't like opinion columnists as such because I don't, many of them I don't think have earned any right for me to respect their opinion. So I was happy to write about things that I knew something about in which I felt there should be change or development. So I would and still do find it uh, satisfying for me to work out on paper, I suppose, what I think about, for example, police shooting a psychotic woman uh, who was attacking a, a, a garden chair with a blunt mattock a few years ago, or children who are in foster care being allowed to inhale volatile substances in their foster care places, or human rights stuff um, of a general nature. I'm often asked to, but it was never my primary interest, to comment on the role and status of women. It is satisfying, even if I'm attacked for it, to be able to explain why I think um, not only that Joan Kerner was an extraordinarily courageous Premier, um, but that she did a lot of things um, which have been, for which the credit has been given to other people. And part of the reason for that is the general cultural attitude to women with official power. And I felt similarly about the torrents of outrage poured upon Christine Nixon because she went off and had tea on the night of the appalling fires, Black Saturday fires, and the uh, attacks that have followed since with former premiers telling the Fosters board they needed to sack Christine because of uh, the public perceptions of her behaviour that night. Um, and, and those sorts of misogynist attitudes towards larger women who are not so young but who are powerful and are agents for change. You simply remove a person who has done evil things in that violent way cannot be described as a just act. I do not think you can achieve a just outcome by acting unjustly.
And that's not because I've been taught that. It's because that's where my study of human rights law takes me. So that Adolf Eichmann deserved a fair trial, and he got one. I wouldn't have executed him because I believe in the right to life. But um, even a monster who exterminated millions of people was entitled to have the case proved against them. Osama bin Laden had become the signature, I suppose, of uh, our fear of um, chaos and of uh, an alien being set of beliefs coming and taking away our own certainties. I think putting those fears in the open and seeing what this man was really like, a man who dyed his beard, who had the shakes, um, who has a shrill voice and who was living on his own in squalor, would have been far more important to see, I think, than the, uh, the object wrapped in, in uh, cloth that was dumped in the sea after being DNA tested. I think its progressive stand is unique. I know it's seen by some as a theological journal. That's actually one of the attractions for me. It taught me something about um, Jesuit approaches to various questions because they're quite often, they're not the pious rubbish you tend to get from George Pell, for example, uh, or the uh, uh, careful writings of um, various cardinals or uh, bishops who are afraid they're going to get sacked for saying something that's not acceptable in the Vatican at the moment. Um, and you can see the, the respect for um, people's dignity behind them. And that's most unusual. You see, Presbyterian me was raised to believe that Jesuits were the source of all evil. And uh, my father once said that if my mother knew that I was writing for a Jesuit published magazine, um, she would uh, pray for my soul.